Easton, and welcome to the Rabbi's Roundtable. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman, Rabbi at Temple B'nai Israel, and we come to you from the studios of MCTV in the basement of the Avalon, and I'm really delighted, as I always am when he's here, to have our Sheriff Joe Gamble, uh, not a stranger to the Rabbi's Roundtable for sure, oh, but it, it, it's always nice to have you, Sheriff. Thanks Thank for you. being Thank here. Thank you for having me, Rabbi. No, pleasure. And uh, I want to talk about, and I think it's important uh, for the community to have yet one more opportunity to hear about um, uh, Project Purple and, right. and what it deals with and how we can become involved and what do you need from us as the community. And uh, I, I think it's, I, I'm, I'm excited about this. It's, re it's really exciting, Rabbi. We're, uh, we're thrilled that the community's embraced it the way they have. We have, obviously, the, um, the rabbi. Yeah. And, yep, oh yeah, temple, temples. And the temples all in. Temple um, we churches. We have other, other churches and, and community groups and our schools. And yep. the whole community is really wrapping their arms around it. And, and you're to be commended for this project. Uh, I, I, I must admit, I, I, I read about the opioid epidemic, and, and I, I sort of, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. How, how has it become so huge? What does that say, and what are our options? And, and I'm, I, I'm serious, right. I'm glad you're out there doing this, because I don't, I don't fully understand it. Well, thank you. Well, you know, Rabbi, one of the the, the, the real issue with this opioid epidemic is prescription medication. Um, and people don't really realize that we have a heroin problem. Everybody hears and reads in the paper that we have a heroin problem in the, in the entire United States. You know, and recently, um, o drug overdoses now count, f are, are the number one cause of accidental death in the United States for everyone under 50 years old. And it's, and, and it's largely in part because of prescription opiates. So prescription opiates are most of your painkillers that you would get from a doctor. Their prescriptions have to be prescribed. You go in for a surgery, a major or minor surgery, you're going to be, probably be prescribed prescription opiates. Well, heroin is an opiate, yeah. and then prescription painkillers are opiates. It's the same drug class. So what's happening is people are becoming addicted by abusing prescription opiates, using them in, inappropriately, and some people, by using them appropriately, um, they're becoming addicted, and then when those pain pills run out and they can't get another prescription because the doctors are really trying to manage mm -hmm. this, and they're addicted, then they go to heroin because wow. it's the same drug. Um, and it, you know, they're you're addicted to the pain pills. You try to get off of them. You go through the same withdrawal that you would go through on a heroin withdrawal. Yeah. And it's very difficult, and very challenging for people, and then they continue with that addiction through wow. illegal substances. Wow. So it's really, I mean, now that it's the leading cause of death, accidental death, for everyone under 50, I mean, it's just, it's an epidemic that we've never seen. It's the deadliest drug yeah. epidemic in the history of our country. I, um, I, 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 I am not just stunned, I, I, I feel great sympathy, sympathy for all those who are involved. I mean, even from your perspective, it's not, it's not just about fighting crime and no. getting the bad guys, it's also about, I mean, that's a remarkable statistic. The, the leading cause of death? Of accidental death for everyone in the United States under 50, 50 years wow. old and under. And the CDC just put those numbers out just a few weeks ago. Wow. Well, um, so thank you for this effort. Thank you. Let's talk, let's go from that to, let's talk to, about Project Purple. And uh, I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold up the, uh, what, this the is tall that goes purple. That's our uh, bumper sticker. The, oh, the would. bumper sticker. And, uh, how, how can we get these? You can get these bumper stickers. You can go to the Chamber of Commerce here in Easton. Oh, good. So they're one of our locations. You can pick stuff up. You can come to the Sheriff's Office right here uh, on Westover Street, and we'll give you a stack of them or whatever you want. We also have an educational brochure that talks about some of the facts and figures. Wonderful. Educational messages that we're going to put out. So we're kicking off September 1st. September 1st. The topic goes purple. Um, Everybody's in uh, the town of East, and we got some cool stuff, really fun stuff going well, on. Well, we're going to talk about it. Sounds okay, great. Great. So, we got some fun stuff going on in September, um, but we're going to kick off September 1st. We're going to go through September 30th yep. for the awareness part of it. And then, one of the lasting effects that we're going to have is we're going to, we've started purple clubs in our schools, Topicos Purple Clubs in our oh, schools. Oh, neat. Neat. with our high school kids and we're going to have purple events at the high school tell goes purple events at the high school so on the first the first day then when we kick off yeah um, easton high school plays a football game at home we're going purple at the game 
cool. We have purple footballs thrown into the stands. We're going to have our educational oh, brochures. We're going to have an nice. outreach team right there to meet with parents and kids as they come in and start educating them. Kelly Griffiths, our superintendent of right. schools, has given us open doors to Wonderful. come in Wonderful. and uh, help educate. We've got some really exciting stuff planned. Well, I, I, you know, uh, I want you, if, when, when you're out on patrol after the first, <laughs> At night, if you, I don't know if you patrol at night. I, but, I go out at night sometimes. Okay. Yeah. I want you to come by Temple because we're going to string, uh, we're going to string lights uh, right. on, around the pillars. We'll get some pictures. Take pictures of your purple stuff. The oh, people I will. Out there. Send them oh. to us. We'll put them on our Facebook page. All right. Share our Facebook post. We're also going to have educational messages on, on our Facebook cool. and our website. Uh, so let let's talk some about the calendar and some of the events. Sure. So I I know. Um, and by the way, uh, I have happen to have a copy of this morning's. Star Democrat, a great, great article. Yeah, they did uh, a really nice uh, job. They're, they're, they're really good. Um, you have people coming in that are going to be speaking and yes. uh, working with the kids and the community. Yes. So on the, on September 18th, which is a Monday night at 730, right in front of our courthouse, yeah. our historic courthouse, um, we're going to turn, we're going to have a lighting ceremony that night where we're going to turn the, per, the, the, the courthouse purple that night. On September 1st, Easton Utilities, they're just a great group of people to work yeah. with. They're turning the whole historic downtown Easton purple with lights. So on the September 1st, drive around Easton, take some pictures. I mean, they're putting purple spotlights, shooting it on buildings. They're going to have purple lights on, on the poles. It's going to be really cool. But we're going to leave the courthouse as it is until the 18th. We're going to light the courthouse purple that cool. day because the very next day, Chris Heron, who um, yep. started the Project Purple yep. through the Heron Project. He's a former NBA basketball player I for the Boston that. Celtics. Uh, became addicted to uh, prescription pills, just like our kids and our people are, and then went on to heroin, and he's going to come tell his story. He's been on ESPN. Right. He's been on national media. He's yeah. a great speaker. Yeah. Um, so he's going to come on the 19th, September 19th, at right. 7 o'clock, the Easton High School Auditorium. Everybody's welcome. You, you need to. You don't make, no tickets. Just show up, but come right. early because we think yeah, we're going to be figured. packed. You I, better get I, there I, early. And then the 19th and 20th during the day, he's going to educate all of our eighth through 12th graders oh, in Talbot wonderful. County, private and public schools. Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. So we have all the pub, uh, the private schools coming to Easton High. They're going to bus their kids to Easton oh, High for an in-school assembly. That's and great. Um, so he's going to give his message. He really connects with young people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my own son, uh, in college, heard him speak and. Uh, Thought so much of it that he actually called me at 11 o'clock at night. I thought that he was in trouble or something, you know. <laughs> He's like, Dad. And he told me about this Chris Heron guy, and I started doing a little more research on him, looked at some of his videos, and then saw him on ESPN. I said, we need to bring that guy here. Wow, to that's terrific. To have an impact on our that, youth. That's terrific. So tell me about Grilling with Gamble. Grilling with Gamble? Is it... Uh, I have so much on the agenda. Is it grilling with gamble or is it shucking oysters? Well, uh, it, it could be both. It's, so you we're going to be shucking. A good, a lot's better. We're going to be shucking oysters. Oh, grilling with gamble is probably over at the. Um, um, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> it's on okay. The name of the uh, okay. Candlelight Cove. Yes, Candlelight. Great. So yes. Grill, grilling with gamble. Um, we're going to Candlelight Cove's doing a grandparents' day. Yep. It's during September, yep. so we're doing a bunch of purple events. So I'll be over there speaking that day. We're going to meet with grandparents, parents, and talk to them about their role in this yeah. thing and how they can clean their medicine cabinets out, yeah. get those prescription opiates out. Because, Rabbi, 65% of our kids who abuse prescription opiates get them out of our own medicine oh, cabinets geez. or their friends' families' yeah. medicine cabinets. So it's one of our learning educational points that we have to get out to the community. And then uh, I think around September 6th, we're going to be down at... Um, um, all full Arthur's in St. Michael's. We're nice. going to be shucking oysters. They're Very going to, nice. They're going to give us uh, donations for the oysters nice. that we shuck. Cool. Um, so there's just tons of events. You can go to our Talbot Goes Purple yep. website, yep. which is talbotgoespurple.org, or the Facebook page, and you see all those events. That and if on. people, can they also call your office? They can call our office at 410-822-1020. Um, and we'll put, that up, we'll put that up underneath in a moment. Um, but, uh, um, no, I, this, is, this is so important. Um, not not only as a community leader for, for you to do, but uh, just as a way of, of trying to respond with some sanity and some some depth of understanding. And yeah, I, th I, I think what you're to be commended for all of this. Thank you. I mean, it's really important. I think it's really important, especially today for law enforcement, that 
we, we need to make that extra effort to be connected to our community, understand the, what our community is suffering through. And this is really the biggest issue that our community is suffering through now. It's, it's an epidemic that we've never seen before yeah. on the Eastern Shore or yeah. in the United States. So, and the answer is at the end of the day, we need to educate. Uh, and yes. We need to educate people because most people don't know. Um, they really don't get it. Yeah. Um, they don't understand yeah. how we got there. And I, I give this um, little survey every time I speak with people, and I say, okay, I, and it's usually parents and grandparents. Yeah. And I say, raise your hand if you talk to your kids about drinking and driving, texting and driving, and seatbelt use. Well, everybody raises their sure. hand because we've all talked to our kids about that because it's so important, and that used to be the leading cause of accidental death. Yeah. And then I say, raise your hand if you talk to your kids or your grandkids about prescription opiates or prescription painkillers, which are the same thing. About 10% of the room raises their hands. And they're in shock because they look at me and say, well, I don't understand why the sheriff's talking about painkillers. Yeah. Well, that is the path to addiction for our kids. They get involved with prescription opiate painkillers, they, they use, misuse them, and then they get addicted. So we need to, once Project Purple's done or Talbot goes purple, I'm hoping that when we go and speak and say, raise your hands, and all those hands yeah, go up, just like, increase. just like drinking and driving, yeah. just like texting and driving, that this is, is as important. In fact, it's more deadly than drinking and driving, than, than, than all those deaths yeah, combined. Yeah, yeah. We lose about 600 people a year to, on our highways yeah. in Maryland. Last year we lost 2,000 people to, to overdoses. That Maryland. is just a phenomenal number. And it's not to suggest that the other issues aren't so no, that, right, serious. No, absolutely. So you're not making that comparison. It's right. just that this is, this is over the top. This is over the top. And just four or five years ago, that number was below car accidents. So in one year, we went up 500 deaths from 2015 to 2016, we went up 500 deaths. And I'm, my fear is this year that we're going to go up another 500 wow. and get, a, get to 2,500 deaths in Maryland. Wow. And um, that's just in our state. That's just in our state. That's, it, it's, it's stunning. It, 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 well, it, it really is amazing. Um, project Purple is an important project. It is, it is a, a, a chance to educate not only our kids, but learn ourselves. Uh, you know, in so many ways, I'm, I, I, I always say I'm a dinosaur, especially when it comes to technology. <laughs> I am but, too. <laughs> you know, but uh, when, when, when you, you don't have any kind of real experience or any kind of uh, connection, you, you assume that things are one way and they're not. And this is, right. this is uh, as I've said before, thank you for doing this and edifying and educating the community. Um, Project Purple starts September 1st. Anything, what else should we know? Anything? Uh... Well, you can come, if you want to support Project Purple, if you go to our website, you yep. can actually enter in. We have people yep. volunteering every day. Yep. They're going to go to our tables. We're going to have tables with our tablecloths set up with Project Topicos Purple on them, the handout stuff that functions all over the community. And we're going to be at youth sporting events. We really want to hit parents where they are. Yeah. We know that parents are busy. I yeah. would, you know, of course. As parents, we were busy. And you don't have time to go here to learn about this, so we want to educate them at the ball fields, That's at great. the high school, and impact those places. So we're always looking for volunteers to be willing to stand with us, learn a little bit about it so they can speak intelligently about it, and so we can engage parents and young people is to really educate our whole community. Wonderful. Pastors and yeah. rabbis yeah. such as yourself are, are, are pitching in. They're, they're getting their congregations involved, which is great. And, uh, you know, we just, we need people to understand the depth of the issue so yeah. we can really roll these sure, horrible sure. numbers. Well, I, I, I don't remember if in the, our, uh, the Star Democrat article this morning it talked about uh, which churches. Do you, you don't any, you know, off the top of your head, you don't know which churches are involved, do you? Well, just last night I was at Union Baptist Church. Oh, excellent. And um, Union Baptist, with the help of um, Joanne Muller, who attends a Royal mm -hmm. Methodist Church. Yeah. Um, they brought a bunch of pastors together. There's about 25 pastors oh, there wonderful. last night, and we talked about it. So they're going out to their congregations. I've had, uh, I've been asked to speak at a couple Christ Church in St. Michael's oh, on good, the good. Seven, uh, It's a Sunday morning that I'm gonna, I'll be speaking there, and then I just got some information from uh, one of the Oxford churches, like me to come down there and speak about the thing. So, you know, any of those community groups that want somebody to come to speak for us to come educate them, we'll try to get you on our calendar. And even sure. if we can't fit you in, in September, we're gonna—that's fine. Oh yeah, we're gonna sustain these clubs in our Wonderful. high schools for the next two years. 
Oh, terrific. And then we're going to bring speakers in and have purple events. Um, you know, our hope is to have, you know, purple basketball game at the high school when they're playing another team and then have maybe one of our local addicted people who's in recovery at halftime share their message wow. about how they were sitting in those stands just a few years ago and how they got involved with this and, you know, how it impacted their lives. And so we really want to keep it on the forefront. We've had some great um, people in our community, wonderful people, businesses um, that have supported it financially. Terrific. So it's, it really is being embraced by the whole, the whole well, county. Again, thank you for doing this. Uh, Project Purple begins on September 1st, uh, a couple of weeks. Not Just even, a couple of weeks, yeah, a week and a half. A week and a half. We, we um, and a half. and um, that sounds like a silly question. You want people to wear purple? Yes, we want people to wear purple. We want people to take pictures with them wearing purple. Okay. Um, at their businesses, at their churches, at the synagogue, wherever. And, Absolutely. And share them with us on our Facebook page, tag us in the post, cool. all that stuff that me and you don't understand. Yeah, exactly. We actually have, uh, iFrog is doing one of those, um, and you don't understand it, I don't understand it. I don't it, know. What... Uh, it, it's a Instagram filter, maybe? I think it's called a filter that's going to be purple whatever, that kids will use. Whatever you say. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's... So, there's all kind of stuff. We've had the one billboard out here that Preston is all putting some purple stuff on. The, the only billboard in Tulsa County. <laughs> so everybody's getting involved. Tillman Island's getting involved with the purple lights, and and we'll also have about 50 or 60 messages out there on banners uh, throughout the whole county. Cool. At the educational yeah. points yeah. that we're trying yeah. to push yeah. out. And, so look for those as well, and walk up to one and get a picture. As long as it's safe, get a get, take a selfie next to it and gotcha. send it into us. Gotcha. No, and and while we're if you know how to do that, I, that I can do. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we can talk offline about that. Uh, but seriously, uh, well, this this is this is dynamic. This is in, innovative. Thank you again. Uh, I, I know the community is going to respond. It has responded positively. Uh, we, you'll come on again uh, maybe the middle of September, Absolutely. early October, yep. and we'll talk more about this. Yeah, I need to thank one person though yes, before sir. you leave. Yes, Tidewater Rotary, um, they actually heard me speak, and they're the ones who came to me and said, hey, we want to do something. We want to help. What can we help? Well, I had this kind of project in my mind yeah. um, for my first two years as sheriff. There's a lot of things I was having to address at the sheriff's office sure. to get things moving the way I wanted them to move. Sure. Well, it was perfect timing because Lucy Hughes, their president, came to me and said, we want to help. What can we do? And I said, well, I have this project. And that's how this came, the whole oh. thing birthed. So Tidewater Rotary has been awesome. They've been out helping Wonderful. me fundraise and spreading all the stuff around town and really motivating people, in the, especially the business community, who they're, you know, the Rotary yeah, sure, are really connected sure, yeah. to the business communities. So I need to have a shout out for her. Well, good for them and to her, our appreciation. Uh, again, this is, this is going to be a great success. Uh, and and, and, and um, not only will it be a, a success as a community program, but uh, my prayer is that we will see it succeed uh, with regard to its impact on those who are most susceptible. And uh, mm. uh, again, uh, thank you for your leadership and for thank all you. you do. We've thank been you. speaking with our sheriff, Sheriff Joe Gamble, about Project Purple, which starts on September 1st. Again, if you're interested, give us the website one more time. It's TalbotGoesPurple.org. TalbotGoesPurple.org. And they can just enter in their email address yeah. if they want to volunteer and just tell us, hey, I want to get involved, and we'll contact them with opportunities to oh, get involved. Oh, excellent. This has been a wonderfully important Rabbi's Roundtable. Thank you, Sheriff, for always being here Thank when, you, when, uh, when you're available. And Easton, we will see you next time in purple. Bye for now. <laughs>